Hey guys, still here. Time to build some add-ons to the submarine that I built the other day. This is the basic sub that I built. It is completely functional as a submarine and it has torpedoes, but it cannot defend itself against any kind of air threats. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. For that, you just need to take off the main propulsion on the stern and we're basically going to attach yet another compartment to the back of the sub. So let's put her in mirror mode. Let's add some hull compartments. And it doesn't even have to be that big. I think that I can get away with just having this. Here we go. Now, it's not going to be a particularly large missile compartment. That's not the aim here. The aim is to make it a, let's say, a four missile tube or a four missile launch system. Of course, these things will need to be connected. There we go. Now they're all hooked up. And I'm going to be using the space around the missiles to add additional ejector add-ons. Because, let's face it, my submarine is usually going to be cruising at about a depth of 50 meters, if not more. And these will make sure that the submarine actually gets, the tr gets these AA missiles out of the water. Or actually, they're not AA missiles, they're surface-to-air missiles, or subsurface-to-air missiles. By doing it in such a fashion, having some ejector add-ons, you can make sure that these things first leave the sub with quite a high pressure. They're forced out of the submarine, and the sooner they hit the surface of the water, and the sooner they break through, the sooner I can actually engage threats. So that's why these ejector add-ons are on here. Next up, a couple of gantries. These missiles don't have to be particularly long. Now you can see they're constantly complaining that they don't actually have a missile controller. So let's just throw a missile controller on and quit the uh, whining of these things. Now, they're short range missiles. I'm only going to be adding one fuel tank. I'm going to be adding another bit of fins. I'm going to be throwing on a fragmentation warhead. This thing is purely designed to go after air targets. It's not designed to go after ground targets. I don't need any large explosive damage. For that, I'm going to set the explosive angle at 30 degrees, so that if this thing hits, it's going to be doing damage in a pretty narrow cone. Apply the same to all missiles. Let's add a couple of staggered add-ons to make sure that it doesn't fire all four missiles immediately. I'm going to have a short delay between those. Next up, local weapons controller. And finally, we're going to be adding a wireless receiver. Next, set up the local weapons controller. The missile range on these things is not fantastic. Maximum range, I'd say, is about 700 if you only have one fuel tank. And that might even be stretching it. Minimum altitude to engage is going to be, let's say, 15. So that it can still engage some surface threats, but only if they have a pretty high draft. And I'm not going to set a minimum range, I'm not going to set a maximum speed or a maximum blocks. This is all that I want to have as limits. Maximum range, 700, maximum or minimum altitude, 15. Then, a friend and foe system, or an IFF on the missiles, it's not particularly required, but it depends on the type of submarine build that you have. Because you see, it's a nice system to have, but if you're operating this sub alone, then you don't particularly need one you could get away without actually having one of these on board. But in case that this thing does operate with fleets, actually let's remove the staggered add-ons and add some more connectors there so I can throw on a couple of additional modules. And down you go. Back with the staggered add-ons, they're going to go there. Set these to 5.5 and 0.5. Then throw in an IFF. And now these missiles will not seek out friendlies. The one problem that you do have is that they don't have a one turn yet. You could say that you're going to sacrifice one bit of fins for a one turn. It's your choice. Sometimes these things tend to lock on, although they don't particularly do a fantastic job. Now, when it comes to actually targeting these things, you're going to have to use something that's able to detect air threats. And a wireless snooper is able to do that. An active sonar or a passive sonar will not be able to do this. You cannot detect air threats with that type of um, system because it's only going to work in the water. So as far as detection equipment goes, 
you could go for a wireless snooper. A passive radar, I believe, does not work below the waterline. So this means that you're not actually going to be able to detect anything if you have the submarine below the water. That's why I found that really the only thing that works is the wireless snooper or a retroflective sensor, a retroreflection sensor 360. Um, it's not particularly fantastic, but it gets the job done. For now, let's go with the wireless snooper and see if it performs. But first, we have to seal up the submarine again. Make sure that you always do this before you take her out to spin. And considering that this is another compartment that has air, we can use it as a flooding compartment to get the sub below the water. So water, air pump, and the AI will automatically pick up that there is another air pump that has joined the ship. I will use this air pump in order to get this thing to the required depth. Throw in some smaller beams here. Make sure you close off these sections. You're gonna need to have metal blocks over there, otherwise it's not actually working. And then reattach the propulsion. Go with the huge propeller. It is perfectly in the middle. We're gonna go with a rudder. And let's put her in the water. Bring her up to a bit of speed. Of course, you're gonna have to re-engage all of the controls here. So I'm going to say this is a primary system. You can see it's immediately spinning up. This one was red, that one was green. We are submerging slowly, but the bow compartment seems to be a bit light. Seems that the air isn't quite being pumped out yet. There we go, it is submerged, it's not flooded. And now we're slowly but steadily starting to descend. Let's see what the required altitude is. Required depth is minus 94. And the submarine is starting to go down, albeit very, very slowly. Minus 7. Let's make the gain for this thing a bit higher, so it's going to go down a bit faster. Uh, let's go with point 0.1. Minus 8. And there we go, minus 9. Okay, so we have the weapon system available. We have the weapon system online. It is con connected to the AI, so it should be able to fire. Let's actually have a weapons test. For this, I'm going to be simply beaming in a very, very light monkey barrel target. Let's see where the target is. Currently, it's too far away. It's 700 meters out, and I believe I set the weapons controller to have a range of... What was it? 700? Maybe? Let's have a look. Yep, 700. But I believe that it's not actually been detecting anything yet. It is tracking the monkey barrel. There we go, missiles are out. Going directly for the target. A couple of nice explosive hits there. Fragmentation destroying the bottom end of the monkey barrel. You can see all of these missiles suddenly coming out of the water, seemingly where nothing is. And there we go, more and more damage going in. And this thing is going to be toast pretty soon. Now the missiles that I'm using are pretty cheap. They're not actually costing me a lot of stuff. It seems though that I am taking fire. I am not diving deep enough yet. And this is causing the sub to take quite a bit of damage. So I need to get this thing to start going deeper ASAP. Now the sub is trying to hit the target with torpedoes, which is a bit of an unusual weapons choice, but I haven't set the torpedoes so that they know that they can only engage surface threats, I believe. Or the monkey barrel has currently made it into the water and is now being targeted by torpedoes, but I don't believe so. There it is. All right, I'd say weapons test successful. The only thing that didn't quite work out is that the submarine was too low in the water, or actually too high in the water, to make sure that the sub got a good hit off or that the sub didn't get hurt itself in the process. But this is it. This is all you need. A couple of missile launchers, a couple of missiles, 
a, a couple of ejector blocks to make sure that they actually fire these things right out from the sub and get them to the surface as fast as possible. That's all you need to know. So, a little quick add-on to the sub, and you can make as many of these add-ons as you like. For now, I hope you enjoyed. If it was useful, please give it a like. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments, and otherwise I'll see you soon for more additions to this submarine.